Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I built this air compressor control cabinet, which effectively consists of a large contactor switched by the air pressure switches on two air compressors, and also employs an auto transformer to convert 240 volts single phase from an electrical panel to 120 volts uh, with 4 kVA power output capacity. So here's the cabinet that I'm going to be using to store my contactor system and my auto transformer system. It's approximately uh, 13 inches on this side by around 21 inches on that side by approximately 30 inches tall. And I'll show you the inside of it and where I'm going to be positioning each set of components within the cabinet. So you can see I already have some supplies laid out in here, but here's the basic layout that I'm planning on using for this. The bottom tier of this cabinet here is going to be used predominantly for the transformer. That's where I'm going to have the auto main auto transformer, which will be my original isolation transformer reconfigured in the auto transformer configuration. I will have to install some vent holes, probably not a huge amount of ventilation is going to be necessary because the, uh, the enclosure is metal so it's going to conduct and transmit heat fairly effectively, but at the same time I think having a little bit of airflow would be beneficial. The next level up is going to be the location where the contactors and uh, fuses are installed. So I have uh, a few of these glass fuses and I'm going to actually be configuring two fuses on the incoming uh, phase, or not phase leads, but split single phase leads from the main panel. I'm going to then supply that power to a bank of switches where I can have a master control switch for the 120 volt supply and of course a switch for turning on and off the compressor control. So fuses and contactor are going to go on this level, and then on this level on the top is most likely going to be general purpose wiring, possibly uh, additional storage, and any other uh, components that I end up needing. Now I may change that configuration depending on how I end up actually putting this thing together, but for now that's the existing plan on how I'm going to utilize the enclosure. Now I chose a metal enclosure because I want it to be uh, reasonably flame resistant in the event that a failure occurs inside the cabinet, and additionally, I wanted to be able to ground and earth the entire uh, enclosure so that if any wiring becomes abraded or damaged, it will be able to then fault out to the case and uh, open a fuse or a breaker. So here's a side view of the panel. Now I want to install two of these handy boxes, these junction boxes here on this top tier level. Uh, one of them is going to be for the control switches that are going to operate the main supply and the uh, control for the compressor supply and I want to have these basically surface mounted on the exterior of the cabinet and I'm going to knock out these center knockout holes in these uh, handy boxes so that I can then drill through and install a grommet or a Romex clamp on the inside of the cabinet through this hole so that I can then interface between these boxes and the electrical system in the cabinet. So I'm going to mark out the locations where I want the mounting holes for bolts to go through. I'm also going to tap the knockouts out and then I'm going to work on installing these. So I marked out the locations where I wanted to drill the holes, and I've already drilled pilot holes in those locations. Now I've also, uh, I'll show you, I'm using my bat box, which I built in a previous video, to power this 12 volt electric drill. This drill had originally a battery uh, operated, or it was originally battery operated, however the nickel cadmium battery it came with has long since stopped working. So it now is a 12 volt corded drill. So let's drill out these holes then. So as you can see here, I've now installed the junction boxes. Now I've tapped out the knockouts, but I've not drilled the holes here in the actual enclosure yet. My plan is to pre-drill these with the pilot drill, and then use a step drill to widen them until they have the approximate diameter of the uh, 3 8 inch knockout. So I'm going to do that next. Time to do some step drilling. Now if you haven't used a step drill before, this is one of the coolest tools ever, because it's basically an entire drill index in one bit. So I've installed the Romex clamps, or NM, non-metallic clamps, as they're uh, otherwise known, in these holes that I've drilled in the side of the enclosure. Now typically these are used to secure NMB or NM Romex cable, which is a type of uh, electrical house wiring used in residential applications, but in this case I'm just going to be using them as strain relief for the conductors that will be going from the receptacles and switches 
on these panel or on these boxes into the inside of the enclosure. So now that these are properly installed, I have uh, I put together a receptacle box for one side of these. Now I've included one GFCI uh, pr uh, protected receptacle because this entire enclosure will be installed in an outdoor location, and I've installed a non-GFCI protected receptacle which is intentionally not connected through the load terminals of the GFCI. That's in case I want high reliability equipment that's not going to come in contact with uh, human workers very often to be able to be connected to this box where I don't necessarily want, say, moisture ingress to cause uh, nuisance tripping. So these are both self-grounding self receptacles, meaning that they both can be grounded through the enclosure in which they're installed. So I'm going to be also additionally installing an equipment grounding conductor to the ground screw of this box which will go back to the main grounding point in the enclosure. Now technically I could rely on the metal chassis itself as the equipment grounding conductor, but for additional safety I would like to have uh, at least to the box, not to the individual receptacles, uh, some form of hard bonded ground connection. So now what I can do is take these receptacle lines and I can start feeding them through the strain relief here. And before I prop, uh, finalize the installation here, I am going to install the equipment grounding conductor. So I'll feed that through the Romex clamp as well. And I additionally have a green ground screw, which can then be installed in the box. So now the receptacles have been installed. Next, we can move on to wiring and installing the switch controls. So now I'm going to configure the switches. So I've already grounded the box with an earthing wire here. And now what I have, I've wired up these two switches in this uh, cover plate. And the way I've configured them is this switch is actually a specialty switch. This is a dual pole switch, meaning it can switch two separate circuits independently of one another with one uh, lever. And this other one is a standard, uh, basically, household switch. Now I've wired some 24 gauge speaker wire to the household switch, as this is only going to be powering the signal transformer that drives the compressor control system. This one I've wired with 12 gauge wire because this is going to be the master switch that controls the entire system and is going to be switching both phases or both legs of the single split single phase 240 volt supply from the breaker panel. So now the switches have been installed. We have the switch for controlling the compressors and we have the switch for controlling the master power. So here's the other side of the cabinet. Now I've drilled another hole and installed a Romex connector on the outside this time for connecting the line cord that's going to come in from the 240 volt wall receptacle. And I've installed a, another box, this time a single gang box, into which I'm going to install the output receptacle, which is where the air compressors are going to plug in. Now this is distinctly separate from the other receptacles we already installed, because those are going to be used for hotel power loads, i.e. loads that are not uh, switched or directly controlled by the system, but you might still want to uh, power with 120 volts when you only have a 240 volt supply. So here's a view of the front of the panel. You can see I've drilled three holes in this panel for these neon indicator lights. I've configured this one with a 200k ohm resistor for the 240 volt main input supply, and the remaining two I've configured with 100k ohm resistors for the 120 volt supply that uh, will be coming from the transformer and from the contactor feeding the compressors. So I'm going to press fit these into position. There's the first one installed. Grab the second one here. And We'll get the third one as well. So now our three indicator lights have been installed. So the next step is I need to install the contactor, the power transformer for the control system, and the four fuse holders, which I'll show up close in a moment, that are going to be protecting the circuit. Now here's how I'm going to configure the fuse holders. These are Edison style glass fuses installed in a uh, basically a 660 watt lamp holder, which normally would be undersized for the application, but since we're going to be running this in an enclosure, and because the uh, contacts are directly connected to uh, tap-off screws, it should be comparatively uh, high current handling in reality, and should be good for the application. 
So the way I'm going to operate the fusing system is I'm going to have the input supply line on both uh, split uh, single phase legs fused at 20 amps with two 20 amp time delay fuses. It's important to use time delay because the compressors have a very, very large inrush current. And then I'm also going to be fusing the uh, secondary output power for the hotel power or the external receptacles. And because the neutral on that external receptacle is basically generated using a floating uh, floating point on the uh, transformer as opposed to an earth reference potential, I do also need to fuse the neutral. That being said though, fusing the neutral presents hazards of its own because you really, unless there's a fault in the neutral itself, don't want the neutral circuit to actually open circuit uh, and disconnect. And because of that, you want to use a uh, higher fuse rating for the neutral than you would for the hot. That way under an overload condition, the hot always preferentially opens. So I'm using a 20 amp time delay fuse for the hot and a 25 amp time delay fuse for the neutral. This should assure that all of our fault characteristics are predictable and that we have protection on all actively energized conductors that are not at ground potential. So the next thing I'm going to do is install these devices in the panel. I'll drill out all the holes and get these mounted up and then I'll show you how I'm going to wire them. So here's a view of the inside of the cabinet with all of the hardware mounted and bolted in place but none of the wiring actually hooked up yet. You can see I have the main contactor here, the 24 volt supply transformer here, the four fuses here, and I've also mounted some Romex clamps for strain relief here, here, and here. Those are going to allow cables to penetrate from one level of the enclosure to another. So here's the wiring diagram of the compressor automation cabinet system. I have 240 volts AC with no neutral coming in from the panel. I've chosen not to use a neutral because I want to be able to install this potentially in locations where a neutral is not available. For example, from a welder outlet that might only have uh, line, line, and ground. So I have each of the 240 volt or each of the hot legs going to a 20 amp uh, fuse. This is a time delay or slow blow uh, Edison screw based fuse. And then I have them connected to a dual pole switch, which is the main uh, master on switch. That then feeds the, one of the indicator lights, one of the indicator neons on the front panel, which indicates the 240 volt supply is okay. Now what I've done is I've taken my one to one 2 kVA isolation transformer, and I've actually wired it such that the primary winding is in series with the secondary winding. I've set both the primary and secondary winding to 120 volts, so that when they're placed in series, they add up to a total uh, normal voltage or uh, applied voltage of 240 volts. I've used the connection between the primary and the secondary as a center tap to generate a ref basically a relatively artificial reference neutral, which I'm using as the neutral for the 120 volt power system. I've arbitrarily defined the secondary tap to be the line for the 120 volt system because the primary side of the transformer is fused and should either one of these, uh, well, should the winding that is connected to the output fail open for any reason, that would place 240 volts across the load, which in the case of 120 volt loads could be destructive. Therefore, the uh, winding that's least likely to fail open would be the secondary because it does not have a fuse on it. Now, if the fuse on the primary opens, it will basically shut off the entire transformer and be totally non-destructive. Now, the output of this transformer is routed to two directions. One direction goes through two 25 amp slow blow fuses to a hotel power circuit, which basically is an automotive slash aircraft term for power that's uh, not used in the main powertrain system, but is used basically as auxiliary power for other applications. There's a non-GFCI connected re protected receptacle and a GFCI protected receptacle, since this is located in an outdoor location. The other routing of the 120 volt supply goes through this output to this 24 volt AC contactor, which is used normally for air conditioners, but in this case has been used to power the compressors. I have the input to that tied to a 24 volt AC transformer, which is then connected via the switch on the side of the panel that uh, specifies call for air, and then connects external to the electrical panel via the 220 PSI pressure based switches that are on the air compressors and connects back to, com to complete the circuit. Now it's very important that I have it going through both of these, because if either one of these were to, for example, weld itself closed and fail closed, it would allow the other to still open and cut and break the circuit. This is a safety feature to make sure that if either of the compressors reaches an excessive pressure, it turns both compressors off. 
The output of the contactor goes to another indicator light for the compressor's active light. And as you saw up here, there's a 120 volt indicator light for the 120 volt OK connection. The compressors are connected externally directly to the motors bypassing their internal 120 PSI pressure switches because it's implied that these compressors are exclusively going to be operated from this automation cabinet. So that's the circuit that I've constructed and this is the circuit that is going to be implemented in the final version of the system. So here's the isolation transformer that I'm going to be converting into an auto transformer for this operation. Now I don't want to modify this isolation transformer in its current form at all because I've made, uh, removed this occasionally for uh, application and use in other projects. So instead what I've done is I've constructed a specialty receptacle box. Now this receptacle box is specially wired so that the primary and secondary windings can be connected to it directly via NEMA 5 connections like this. For example, this is the primary connection from the transformer, which can be connected to the primary like this, and a secondary connection will be connected to this uh, output connection using a highly dangerous specialty cable with two male NEMA 5 connectors on it. Now these cables are extremely dangerous and I do not recommend building one of these yourself unless you know exactly what you're doing and it's to be installed in a location that is not uh, exposed to the general public at any given time. This is going to be ex uh, installed in an enclosed cabinet with uh, high, other exposed high voltage wiring in it and as such is deemed a safe application for this. So I finished wiring the cabinet now I haven't connected the supply cable, which is going to tie in with this XT60 connector. I also have not yet connected the compressors, which will connect via this speaker wire. But I have tied pretty much everything together. I've installed the connections for the front panel lights. I've wired the grounds up to the ground point, which I've not connected because it's going to connect to the uh, main supply cable. And additionally, I have connected the uh, transformer coupling to, via two more XT60 connectors in case I need to remove this for any reason. I have all the fuses wired up. Uh, the, two, four, or the 120 fuses and 240 fuses are both wired. The contactor is installed and completely wired up. And the uh, step down transformer is also wired and connected in place. Additionally, I've, I've left a couple of wire nut connections here for adding additional instrumentation in the future. This entire bay will be dedicated to other instrumentation or measuring systems uh, as well as general purpose storage. The transformer is not shown here because I'm going to be installing it once this is outside in its final uh, installation location, and uh, once that's installed it should be ready to operate. Alright, so I've installed the cabinet outside and it's connected now to the air compressors and the interlock system. I've labeled the front of the cabinet accordingly with the 240-120 OK and compressor active lights. Here you can see I have a call for air switch and a master control switch, and in the background I have my output uh, control system labeled for the hotel power. 120 volts, 25 amps, and both the non-GFCI protected and GFCI protected connections. Now I changed out the 20 amp fuses for 25 amp fuses because I needed more power for certain applications, and as you can see I have all kinds of loads plugged in already. The interlocked lines have been connected through the compressor's uh, control switches, and both compressors are connected in series, so if either compressor calls for the air to be shut off, then the uh, compressor contactor will shut off. This is a safety feature to make sure that if one of these uh, contactors uh, stops working or fails closed, the other contactor can always take over and shut off if the air pressure gets too high. Here's a closer look at the transformer and fuse system inside the enclosure. You can see it was a pretty tight fit to get the transformer to fit inside this lower section. I had to set it on its side and I had to use a flat plug to actually make it fit properly without pressing against the doors. Here is my specialty receptacle box that connects the primary and secondary in an auto transformer configuration, and I've made all four fuses easily accessible by placing them near the front of the cabinet. Additionally, you can see the contactor and control power transformer in the background there, and the overall uh, layout of the cabinet is such that serviceability is optimal, uh, optimally possible to make it as easy as possible to modify the system. One thing I have not done is drilled holes in the transformer cabinet section in the lower part. I think I'm going to have to do that eventually, but because it's the middle of winter, the system actually runs very cool. I haven't had any issues whatsoever with the transformer getting hot. But as it becomes warmer out and it gets towards summer, I think it'll be important to uh, add additional ventilation to that section. I've also installed a delay system for one of the two compressors so that only one starts at a given time. This reduces the brownout conditions and reduces the likelihood of the two compressors failing to start due to insufficient current. So now I'm going to show you what happens when I flip the call to air switch, 
and one compressor starts and the other will start shortly thereafter. Let's try it out. I hope you enjoyed watching me build this control cabinet. Thanks for watching Dielectric videos and I will see you next time.